Hello, dear friends. The topic of today's lecture is the nervous system and the neuron. Now let's begin with the introduction to nervous system. Nervous system is the master controlling and communicating system of the body. It controls and coordinates all essential functions of the human body. It enables our body to respond and adapt to changes both inside and outside the body. You can see in this block diagram that nervous system can be classified as central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Further, the central nervous system comprises of the brain and the spinal cord. You can see in this figure, it is locating the brain and the spinal cord. Then, the peripheral nervous system constitutes different nerves. Now, as we have seen that the central nervous system which comprises of brain and the spinal cord, they act as the integrating and command centers of the nervous system. Central nervous system, which is generally abbreviated as CNS, it receives different sensations, interprets and dictates motor responses for the purpose of controlling the various tissues, organs and organ systems of the body. Now let's look at a simple illustration. What happens when you suddenly touch any hot surface or hot object? You will immediately pull your hand back. Do you really think this process is as simple as it looks? No, the answer is absolutely no. It includes the signals from the sensory receptors to go to the central nervous system. Here we are taking spinal cord. And then the central nervous system interprets that signal and finally respond to the motor neurons by telling that we have to put our hand back. So this process simply represents a kind of example for the nervous system. By this example, we can define the main functions of the nervous system. So, nervous system collects the sensory input from the body and the external environment. Then, it processes and interprets the collected or the received input. And finally, it responds appropriately to that corresponding input. Now, moving over to the next part of the nervous system, which was the peripheral nervous system. Peripheral nervous system constitutes different nerves that extend from brain and the spinal cord. Now, what is a nerve? Nerves is a bundle of neuron fibers that are found outside the central nervous system. They link all parts of the body by carrying impulses from the sensory receptors to the central nervous system and from the central nervous system to the appropriate organs and muscles of the body or in the body. Now the nerves can be classified as spinal nerves and the cranial nerves. Spinal nerves are those which carry information to and from the spinal cord. On the other side, if we talk about cranial nerves, they carry information to and from the brain. Now, on the basis of function, we can further subdivide peripheral nervous system into the sensory or efferent divisions and motor or efferent divisions. On the basis of that whether it brings information to the central nervous system or 
it takes information out from the central nervous system so it can be sensory or efferent divisions and motor or efferent division now sensory division basically consists of nerve fibers that convey impulses from the sensory receptors located in various parts of the body to the central nervous system on this other side if we talk about motor division that is which carries impulses from the central nervous system to different organs muscles and glands in the body now depending upon the information which neurons basically motor division is carrying from the central nervous system whether that is voluntary control by us means we are consciously controlling that signals or it is out of our control like blinking of the eye beating of the heart those are involuntary kind of responses which are not under our control so motor division can be classified as the somatic or voluntary nervous system and autonomic or involuntary nervous system so we can define the somatic nervous system as which controls the voluntary movement it allows us to control skeletal muscles also it is responsible for receiving and processing sensory input from the skin muscles joints eyes tongue nose and ears next if we talk about autonomic nervous system they control involuntary responses they carry impulses from the central nervous system to glands various smooth muscles cardiac muscle and various other membranes further we can classify this autonomic nervous system as the sympathetic nervous system or the parasympathetic nervous system both parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system or we can say sympathetic and parasympathetic division that is which we don't have any control because both are under involuntary type of systems but they are different from each other now let's see how they are different from each other sympathetic nervous system it prepares our body system during excita exciting emergency or stressful situations it is more active during exercise therefore it is also termed as fight or flight kind of response now if we talk about parasympathetic nervous system it is active when our body is at rest or we can say under normal conditions it conserves energy therefore it is also sometimes referred to as eat and sleep type of response now let's have a brief recap on the different we can say divisions of nervous system or organization of the nervous system so as we have seen that nervous system is classified into two that is central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system central nervous system further constitutes the brain and the spinal cord on the other side peripheral nervous system have two further divisions sensory division and motor division on the other hand now motor division can be further subdivided as the voluntary that is somatic nervous system or the involuntary that is autonomic nervous system and finally the autonomic nervous system is further divided into sympathetic or the parasympathetic type of nervous system so this was the complete organization of the nervous system now let's move over to the next part that is neuron now what is neuron what is the structure of neuron and how it is useful what is the main function of neuron in our body so neuron is the basic functional unit of the nervous system they are over a billion in a human body they are the communication cells that receive intimate and transmits the information neurons come in variety of shapes and sizes 
Now, let's study about the typical structure of the neuron. So, first is the cell body. You can see in the diagram, it is shown cell body. Now, it is the main processing center of the cell. And also, it is known as the headquarter of the neuron. Now, next part is the nucleus. It controls the activity of the cell. Further, we have dendrites, which are the thin branching extensions of the cell body, as we can see in the figure, that receive signals from other neurons and the sensory cells. Then we have exon, which is a branch which conducts nerve impulses away from the cell body to the other neurons. Next, we have myelin sheath. It protects and insulate the nerve fiber. Then we have nodes of Renvier. It allows nerve impulses to move along the neuron through depolarization and repolarization of the nerve membrane. This process of depolarization and repolarization we'll discuss in the coming lectures. Now we have exon terminal. They receive electrical signals from the exon and release neurotransmitters into the synapse. Now let's see what is what are neurotransmitters and what is the synapse. So you can see in the diagram that neurotransmitters basically they are the chemicals that convey information to the target cells. And what where that process occurs it is a synapse. So that is a junction between the two neurons where one neuron alters the electrical and chemical activity of the another neuron. It occurs between the exon terminal of one neuron and the dendrite or we can say the cell body of the second neuron. So this was the complete structure of the neuron. Now let's see what are the main types of neurons. So we have three different types of neurons. Sensory neurons, motor neurons, and the interneurons. Now, let's see how they are different from each other. Sensory neurons, they have long dendrites, short exon, and they carry messages from the sensory receptors to the central nervous system. Then, we have motor neurons. They have long exon, short dendrites, and they transmit messages from the central nervous system to the muscles or glands. Then we have interneurons. They are also having short exon, but they are found only in the central nervous system where they connect various other neurons. So this was all in this lecture. In next lecture, we will discuss about the communication among neurons. How do neurons communicate in our body? How they can transmit information from one section of the body to the other? Or we can say how one neuron can give information to the other neuron and that brings the information in the nervous system. So this was all in this lecture. Thank you.